out here at the X Takeover in Austria why uh, you can do all sorts of things, meet all sorts of people, and accidentally advertise for Michelin, which I've been doing because uh, they saw my pasty, pasty skin and mistook me for a ghost. Uh, and then they realized, no, that's Brian. Uh, and I said, welcome to Future Aza. Hey, check it out. Uh, Lars from uh, the best in the Tesla. <laughs> yeah. The best in a Tesla, but I mean, really, best in Denmark. Let's just start there. Yeah, yeah, let's start with that. Now, I don't know if you know this, but EVs don't work in the cold. Oh, they don't? No, they don't. Okay. They don't. I know there was a video a guy did a couple years back where he went into the Arctic Circle in the winter in an EV, but I think he died. Yeah, stupid guy. Very <laughs> silly. No, wait, that was you. Yeah. Uh, how many miles, how many kilometers, how, what is the range differential when it's really, really cold? Well, mine went down about 20% on, on that trip to the, to the Arctic Circle, where we drew 4,000 kilometers or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, so, yeah, when we had a full charge, that would have given us, like, it's a long range, Model 3, I would did it in, but it was, uh, it's a 2019 version, so it didn't have the fancy heat pump or anything. It wasn't even the heat pump version, nope. and your losses were still only about 20% from about optimal. About 20% from optimal, yeah. Oh so instead gosh. of getting the, the 400 on mixed driving, I get uh, on road trips around Europe, I've done with my family. Up there, I got like 300 to 320. Okay, and for miles, uh, we're going to go ahead and put that on the screen. 400 kilometers normally, yeah. 320, 300 in the absolute terrible cold. Yeah. How many EVs would you say you've reviewed? Or like driven yourself? Uh, ten different okay. versions, I would say. And uh, which which one is the best? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like the Teslas. <laughs> he does like the Teslas. Yeah. Well, I think they they all very good electric vehicles, but it's just the everyday the convenience of a Tesla and the charging network and the efficiency and the software and software updates. They always get it better. Even my 2019 version is still getting updates and getting new features all the time where the others also nice electric vehicles if you go only go for a little test drive it will feel like a nice car it'll feel like a new car new yeah. cars always feel nice yeah uh, I've rented cars that when I get in them and drive them I think this is a pretty good car and within a day day and a half you start noticing all the all the things that absolutely suck yeah. <laughs> now worth pointing out there is no best or worst Okay, there might be some worst cars, <laughs> yeah. but in terms of best, I've seen people say, you know, Tesla used to be the best, but they're not anymore because this car is faster and this car turns better and this car has longer range. Yeah. And Dr. Frankenstein has been unsuccessful in stitching them together into one just yeah. yet. Yeah, Tesla is competing against everyone else on right. each different metric that the car have chosen. To I be absolutely... Good at. I uh, am not in a financial position to ignore value, so I, of course, weighed all the factors and found that nothing came close to the value of a Tesla. Yeah. You can find EVs that are cheaper, but once you option them up to get to the point where you're getting the same features, yeah. even in a gas car, you're looking at about the same price Yeah. for a car that is not as good. Yeah. Overall, in the north of Europe, yeah. can I call that the Nordic part? Sure. <laughs> okay. In the chilly zone, yeah. <laughs> how is EV adoption going now that it's been so strong for so long? Well, uh, the Scandinavian countries are ah, doing very, very well. well. <laughs> Norway is, of course, completely there, basically. They're going to ban it all together next year. Next year? Yeah. So, uh, But they already like... 90%. And that's new sales ban, not existing. New sales bans. So yeah. you're going to see in Norway no new gas stations yeah. and, and old gas stations starting to disappear. Yeah, they already seen that. Wow. Even, even now. Are there any other <clears throat> dominant EV brands in Denmark? Well, uh, Volkswagen is doing all right with their ID3 and uh, ID4. Uh, and and the Volvo, the new Volvo seems to be doing really well. The XC30, uh, generally in Europe actually, uh, but Tesla is just, especially in my country of Denmark, it's just, <laughs> it, 
It is Tesla takeover, and in my country they have taken over. Last year there was the best-selling brand of any kind. Of any kind. Of any kind, and it was Model Y was the best-selling vehicle, not just that year, but in our entire history. There has never been a vehicle that has sold as many units as the Model Y did last year, and that's a premium car. And I think at the time you posted on X what the previous record holder was. Yeah. And it was, I want to say, in the 80s. And it was a very cheap car. Yeah. Uh, because how can a premium car possibly be the best deal, except it is? Yeah. How much is your electricity per kilowatt hour? Well, at home? Or, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, of course, varies, but it's from, oh, what is that? Uh, <laughs> from one Danish kroner, and you have to have almost seven kroners to get one dollar. Okay, so about a seventh of a dollar. Yeah. Okay, so an eighth of a dollar would be 18 cents. So about 22, 20 cents? No, that'd be a fourth. Anyway. Yeah, that, that would be the average. Oh, no, eight, the day, nine cents. So about 11 cents. I don't know. Yeah. Let's say 11 cents. Okay, and what about Chinese brands? Are we seeing some uh, uptick there? Yes, they have started to uptake, and but the, the big success story for the Chinese in Europe is definitely MG4. Okay. That, that was the fifth best-selling uh, EV brand last year. Well, I think the best-selling Chinese car is the Tesla Model 3. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> because that's still the second best-selling in, that is in the Europe. Second best -selling car. But uh, MG4 is doing quite nicely, and uh, BYD is getting some momentum this year. They have like 1.9% market share of the BEV market right now in, in Europe, but Tesla has 167 so it's not really that competitive yet uh, in the size. And we have heard about Xping also gaining, but they are very, very small. They only have like 0.4% market share right now. So Norway is going to hit 100% next year. Yeah. What are the other targets in the, in the area? Um, a lot of 2030s, right? Yeah, 2030s for most Scandinavian countries, uh, and 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 the uptake is in the Norse in the Norse in the Norse, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the Norse related countries. So uh, yeah, so in in Sweden they are already above 50 percent uh, EV market share, and in Denmark we are about around 40. So um, it's already getting up there. We can easily see getting to 100% in, uh, in 2030. What are the remaining obstacles to adoption? Well, it's definitely still price a little bit because we do have very affordable EVs like the Dash here Spring, which is a very affordable uh, electric vehicle, but it's also like a crappy vehicle. Right. Yeah, it doesn't really get any safety ratings that is very good mm. and uh, the range is not very good and can't charge very fast and all that. So it's not what people are looking for when we're talking about the affordable electric vehicle. They sure. want what Tesla has, but in an affordable package. Uh, so we are still waiting for, for Tesla to deliver that. I'm hopeful that they will. And then of course our biggest and final question, is the Cybertruck actually gonna be coming to Europe? I hope so, because it's very cool looking. <laughs> And when I saw it the first time, I thought, nah, it's too bulky for me. But uh, when I learned the engineering behind it and all that's going on inside and have seen it in person, yeah, now I want one. And, uh, yeah. and I have heard from some guy, he has a channel called Future Asas. And, uh, and he said that they're actually working on it. And they have been working on it for a long time, actually, long time. More, more than a year to get it to Europe. So they are doing everything they can to get it to Europe. There are a number of obstacles that we've seen that have arisen with the EU regulations because they are voluminous. They are hundreds, maybe thousands of pages long. Yeah. It, and some of them are easier to address than others. But it could just be a wholesale shift in what the regulations are. Yeah. Because we were seeing that with the semi-truck was not allowed in Europe uh, because of regulations. It was too long. They changed the regulation. In Australia, it was, I think, an inch too wide, two inches too wide. And even though they're not exporting the semi to those markets at this time, they have changed the regulation to allow it. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. And they also changed the, the weight. The weight? In, in some the countries. Oh, in, sure. in the UK, they, they raised the weight for, for vans and trucks from 3,500 kilos to 4,500 kilos. So they add another ton uh, onto those vehicles. So I think that will spread to the rest That'll of the world. That'll expand well. the use cases of what will actually work. Yeah. Ah. Lars uh, from Best in Tesla joining us. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe he should say his catchphrase. <laughs> of course. 
remember, be nice. And yeah, and I, of course, stay tuned to Juicy and all that good stuff. And I can't wait to hear from you, Clever Robots, in Muskegon, Michigan, where Lars will be on June 15th uh, for the big Michigan Owners Club event there. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. We've got so many great people coming. Kyle from Out of Spec, Sandy Monroe, Jordan Gieseke, Dr. Know-It-All, Tess Latino, too many to mention right here. Jan from Best in Tesla, of course, will be joining us as well. And I might be there. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there. Chris from Dirty Tesla. I don't know if I already said that. And we're going to have, oh, Bearded Tesla Bearded guy Tesla. will be there. We're going to have at least seven Cybertrucks there. So don't miss that. And uh, yeah, and I think that's enough. <laughs>